in the demo, what I'll run through is um, a couple of things I didn't have slides on, but I mentioned. I want to show you how teams and queues work, show you how sales literature work, works, and then I'll show you how to work with role tailored forms. Again, in another session, we're going to drill down more on creating those. Let me switch out now to my desktop. And I want to work today with a, uh, a virtual environment, a familiar AdventureWorks company. So let me go here. And first, so CRM 2011, this is on-premise um, version, but as far as I can tell so far, there's no difference between on-premise and online. So let me just give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, let me talk about queues for a minute. If I go to settings, you're probably familiar with this. If I go to business management and I look at queues, the creation of queues doesn't look much different than we're used to seeing it. Notice I've got this queue for unassigned leads. If I create a new queue, the, the traditional use of queues was what, for service? So let's suppose I call this uh, customer service queue and I'll just uh, accept all the defaults and just Okay, save it. So I've got two queues, customer service and unassigned leads. If I go to the service area and look at cases, okay, so you're probably, even though this UI is a little different, we have the ribbon, so here we are on looking at the cases list here, and I've got the cases tab across the top, and you see this add to queue. This shouldn't be surprising because in Dynamic CRM 4, I could add a case to a queue. But let's go look at leads. And if I navigate to leads, I'll see this list of leads. Again, the UI is different with the ribbon. But the one thing that you don't see on this ribbon that you did see on cases, there's no add to queue button. So you might think at first, well, you, see, you can't really do that. But watch the way this is implemented. If I'm on this list and click customize, this is one of the things that I observed last time in the last session is this in-place customization. You use this a lot. This is invaluable now. Um, once you get used to this, it saves you so much time. Let's customize this entity. So here I am, just two clicks away from customizing the lead entity. And notice in this section here, options for entity, you have queues. So this is kind of interesting. What this, this is available for every record type in Dynamic CRM now. So you can use this for accounts or opportunities or custom entities, whatever you want. And I'm just going to click that. So I'll check that in. I'll save it. Updating the lead entity. Then as soon as it's done updating, I'll click the publish button here because this is one of those schema customizations that you got to publish in order for other people will see it and if you're kind of new to this stuff that I'm doing here, this customizations, I'll just mention this is the sort of thing that typically just assistive administrator would do. Um, so now let's uh, go back to the leads ribbon and I might not see it yet but if I click somewhere else and then click back on leads now we refresh that view and notice I've got this add to queue button on the leads ribbon. So I pick a lead and there was actually a option in there to establish a default queue for a record type. So I could have you know that, that too but what I can do here is I'll just maybe select my open leads. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get to them anytime soon. I can add these to a queue. So this is kinda nice because now what I can do is just go use the queue you know, lookup view. I could look at active queues. Notice, so we've got individual queues. These are exposed a little bit differently. But in this case, I'm just going to assign these to the unassigned leads queue. And I could also, well, let's uh, show. Let's take a look where those are. So I go to the workplace, and I look at queues. So now this is the user experience with queues. And let's look at the unassigned leads queue. Let's see, where are the records here that I just put in here? These are, I want to look at all items. There we are. It takes a little getting used to. There was a view that was selected there. So now those leads are in this queue. And what's the standard use of a queue? Well, what cases, you know, we'll use queues for doing 
sort of work process, routing, and things like that. You know, a case, you might have a customer service queue that contains a bunch of case records that are sort of there for sort of a first come, first serve scenario. It's the easiest way to think about it. But so anyway, so these records could be in this queue, and anybody who's got access to that, that queue and can accept, can have ownership of a lead record could take those out of there one by one and move them from the uh, unassigned leads queue into their personal queue. But notice, the lead record itself is still assigned to me. This may be familiar to you also. If you remember the way CRM4 works, it's the same here. The, a record can be routed to a queue or placed in a queue, but it's not really owned by the queue. So these are still owned by me, but watch what we can do here. If I go to, um, let's go back to the leads list, make this more obvious. So here's my open leads. If I select these leads and click assign, notice now not only can I assign to another user, I can assign to another user or a team. So this is an important Again, it's kind of a foundational thing, because if I select team here, I've got some teams defined, sales, service, and there's an overall team for the organization. I'll just assign these leads to the actual sales team, and these really are owned by that team. So now if I go back to the queue, okay, so I'll go to one of these lead records now, and if I scroll down here, Notice they are actually owned by a team. So now records can be owned by a team. And that's a, that's a good, um, good example of one you might want to use. But I'll show you another one. There's, there's tons of uses for that. I got asked about that all the time in CRM4. And I want to show you uh, a couple of other good uses of that when we talk about um, goals and metrics. Because it turns out that to have a team be the owner of a goal and a bunch of individuals roll up to that goal. I think that's going to be a pretty common thing in that scenario. Um, so that's just a couple of the, of the kind of foundational things you can see here. What I want to do now is talk a little bit about sales literature. And for that, I want to go, I'm going to switch the uh, CRM that I'm looking at. And I want to look here at, um, this is my CRM online. Okay, that I've set up. This is the beta CRM online. And notice I've got sales literature set up here. This doesn't look much different from what you're used to seeing. Okay. Um, you know, I've got the dynamic CRM 4.0 quick reference card defined as a piece of sales literature. It was called, a, I referred to it as a product sheet there, the type. And if you look at this thing, this probably looks pretty similar to what you're used to seeing, but if I go to sales attachments, notice that these things can have sales attachments. This is a PDF file. So if I want to add a new one, I could add a new sales attachment to this record. And basically, if you, you know, sort of open this up, you can probably guess what this looks like. There's, you know, you can browse out and go grab a PDF file. Here's my quick reference card PDF. The problem with CRM 4.0 was that there was no way, at least no way anybody ever figured out um, how to email this to, you know, how do you actually do anything with this? How to use it? There was no easy way to just email this and attach the PDF file. Well, look what you can do now in CRM4. This really works the way you would hope it works. So I'll go to make a new email message. So here we are in the beta. So this is the CRM 2011 Outlook client. And I'll just send something to uh, one of my colleagues out there who hopefully doesn't mind getting an email from me. Okay. This is actually working by the way. So this is my the, the Outlook client is going up against my beta CRM organization. I need to track it in CRM in order for these things to light up here. So I'll go ahead and do a set regarding. I'll go out and find that contact. Okay, so I set regarding and then as soon as I there you go. As soon as it lights up here, it takes a second to do that sometimes. Now you can see I, if I had a template designed in CRM for the contact uh, record type, I could use that here and you know format the, the, the email just the way I wanted it with the boilerplate and the text and all that. I could do knowledge base articles or attach sales literature. So let's go ahead and attach the CRM 2011 Quick Start Update flyer to this, or I could have done more um, and got you know, gone out and searched for other sales literature, but see that what this does? Boom, just what you'd want this to do. So I think this is what, like I said, this is a small feature, but 
um, it's a good one. So Todd probably won't have any idea what I'm talking about. That's a tracked email now. Um, you know, it's just an Outlook client, goes in my sent mail, but it's attached to that, the uh, contact record. And so uh, that, that's kind of what I mentioned is a, uh, is a small but a, but a very nice feature. Um, let me show you one other one. Okay. By the way, um, one of the, this is kind of a, a this this is in the category of a, of a productivity trick. It's a very small thing, but I like this a lot. Here I am on sales literature. If I was working with sales literature and I wanted to create a new record and then come back here, what I can do now is I can use this new UI. Notice this kind of the flyout menu here. Okay, uh, for every one of these entities has this. I could navigate to the entity, going to any of these views, but if all I want to do is create a new record, notice that I can do that without moving from where I was. So I'm creating a new opportunity record here. So you see that? But still in the background, there's sales literature, so I didn't actually have to navigate to opportunities in order to do that. So that's kind of nice. So we maximize this opportunity form and talk to you about another important feature. Here I am. Okay, so here's the inside sales version of this form. We've got the opportunity profile, strengths, weaknesses, weaknesses, opportunities, tactics, that sort of thing. Line items, completely different version of the form than the executive summary version of the form that we want the execs to look at. Okay, so here's a simplified version of the form. Here's the general information form that everybody else would see. So if you compare this to the more complex version that you might have the inside sales team. There you go. This is actually a, a better demo of that, the actual right demo. Um, so the point here is that no code required. I'm just using security roles. Now I'm the system administrator here, so I can select from all the different versions of the form. But if you're in the inside sales security role, um, you'd only see this version of the form and you wouldn't be able to select from different versions of the form. So that's it's pretty flexible but it gives you a nice capability of, uh, of tailoring that experience a little bit. So let's check